this video, we're going to take a look at how to define budget transfer rules. And budget transfer rules allow you to determine the criteria for when a budget transfer is allowed without having to be routed for approval through workflow. So an example may be is if you want to allow for budget transfers within a particular department to be processed without further review or authorization, whereas a budget transfer that goes across departments would require uh, review and approval before that budget transfer request uh, could be processed. So to define budget transfer rules, you first would uh, define your dimensions for budgeting, and this has been discussed in a, another video for defining dimensions for budgeting. The dimensions we have enabled for budgeting currently are main account, department, and cost center. So those would be the dimensions that would also be available for when defining budget transfer rules. In this example, I'm going to create a transfer rule that allows for uh, budget transfers within the finance department. So I'm just typing in the name and the description for my rule, and then I'll select the account structure that I want to enforce this transfer rule against. And this is uh, specifically for my PL account structure. So once I have the rule uh, created, I'll start adding children or criteria to the rule, um, and this will be made up of um, rule members. So I could have multiple members associated with a rule. In this case, it's a, it's a simple rule definition, so I'm just going to create one uh, rule member that will apply the criteria for when the department is equal to my finance department. And so I've entered this criteria, I save that rule member, and now I have a rule indicating that um, transfers will be allowed when the department across all my budget register entries or account entries on a budget register entry contain this dimension value. I could also create a, a second rule, for example, uh, for IT department, and very similar to the rule I just created, where I'm going to pick the P&L account structure, I'll add a rule member, and at this point I'll enter the criteria for when the department um, is equal to the IT department's um, dimension value. So now I have two rules um, enforced or applied, and in order for these uh, budget rules to become enabled, there is a parameter value that would need to be specified in budgeting parameters that indicates use rules for budget transfers. So that gives you the ability to create and define the rules without them being enforced immediately. And then when you're complete with your setup, you can enable uh, those budget transfer rules. Another key part of the setup uh, for using budget transfer rules would be to define your budget workflow. So in order for those um, budget transfers that violate rule criteria to be um, processed, they would need to be routed uh, through workflow for approval. So in that case, an approval workflow uh, needs to exist. And here I have a very uh, simple uh, budget workflow for the approval, and it is assigned to a particular user to review and approve uh, the budget register entry um, for uh, processing. So then the final step is to ensure that you have a budget code for the budget, um, a budget transaction type of transfer. So I'm going to create a new budget code, and I'll just call this transfer. And then I'll give it the budget type of transfer, and I'll associate that workflow to this budget code. So for budget workflow, you would associate the workflow configuration on the budget code itself uh, so that when this code is utilized in a budget register entry, this workflow will uh, automatically be applied. So now let's take a look at how those rules are enforced when we actually enter in um, a budget register entry. So I'm going to select a budget model that I previously defined choose that budget code that we just created, and now I'll begin entering in uh, the, the budget um, account entry. So I'll pick my P&L account, and in this case I'll pick um, my travel expense, I'll enter in the finance department, and I'll choose my cost center. 
and I'll enter in that I'm transferring $100 to this combination. Now I'll add a second line for the uh, dimension combination where I'm actually going to be transferring the $100 from. So in this case, I'll choose the same account, but I'll choose uh, the IT department. And so in this case, we would have a cross-departmental uh, budget transfer. And so what you'll see occur when I save this line is I'll get a notification that it violates the transfer rule because you recall the rules were within the finance department or within the IT department and this is going across. So I'm, I'm looking to reduce the IT department's budget by $100 and move it to the uh, finance department. So in this case it's violating the rule um, so I won't be able to process this transaction or budget register entry without it um, going to uh, be reviewed and approved uh, by a budget manager or owner. So to complete the process, I will submit this for review and um, I can type a note. In and now I'll, I'll allow the budget owner to make the decision about whether this transfer is allowed. So that gives you just a, a quick idea of how the budget transfer rules can be defined um, and be applied during budget register um, entry.